Hello students, today we will be discussing about eggs. The egg which we most commonly consume is the hen's egg. So today we will talk about the structure of the hen's egg, the nutritive value of egg, the storage of eggs, the chemical composition and also how it can be used in cookery. Egg as all of us know is an excellent source of protein. Biologically, it is a complete protein. So it is the best protein among all the foods available because it has a very good essential amino acid profile. It is estimated that India is the fourth largest egg producer in the world and according to the Ministry of Agriculture, the current estimated income available from eggs is about 10,000 crore rupees. Egg production in India accounts for 47.3 billion eggs per annum. Let us now look at the structure of the hen's egg. The egg is surrounded by the shell which along with two membranes that is the outer shell membrane and the inner shell membrane helps to protect the inner contents of the egg. The shell is porous and contains thousands of small holes which allow gases to pass in and out of the egg. The shell is surrounded by a thin gelatinous layer which is known as a cuticle or bloom and this helps to prevent entry of microorganisms into the egg. Inside the shell is the outer shell membrane which is slightly thick and then inside the outer shell membrane is the inner shell membrane. These two membranes also help to protect the inner contents of the egg. The eggs contain little or no air cells when they are laid. However, after being laid because of a contraction of the inner contents of the egg because of change in temperature. A large air cell is formed at the large end of the egg between the two shell membranes. The egg consists of the egg white and the egg yolk. The egg white is also known as albumin and it is composed of three layers, two layers of thin white and one layer of thick white. Inside the egg white is the egg yolk. The egg yolk is enclosed in a sac which is known as a vitaline membrane. Immediately outside the vitaline membrane is a layer known as chelaziferous, which is the innermost layer of firm white. On either side of the egg yolk are two small thickened ropes of thick white, which is known as chalazi. These two thick rope-like structures help to anchor the yolk in the center of the egg. The egg yolk carries a small germ spot or germinal disc, which under suitable conditions develops into a chick. This slide also shows the different parts of the hen's egg which we usually consume. Egg is an excellent source of protein. The biological quality of egg protein is highest among all the proteins and it is considered as a complete protein. Let us now look at the nutritive value of egg. Egg contains 12 to 14 percent proteins which are very well balanced in terms of essential amino acid profile. Egg is a very good source of fat also. The fat of the egg is present in the yolk. The fat contains lecithin which is a phospholipid. Egg is also a good source of essential fatty acids that is linoleic acid and arachidonic fatty acids. Egg is a very good source of vitamin A. It's also a good source of vitamin D and vitamin E. These are present in the yolk of the egg. It is for this reason that egg is an excellent source of protein for infants and school children because it's a good source of vitamin A and vitamin D. Egg fat is in highly emulsified form, hence it is easily digested and absorbed. Egg contains about 250 milligrams of cholesterol, which is usually present in the yolk. This is one disadvantage, especially for older persons who are above 45 years. But for children, adolescents, pregnant and nursing mothers, egg is an excellent food. Calcium is abundant in the egg, but it is concentrated in the shell. Egg is also a very good source of other trace elements like phosphorus, iron, zinc and other trace elements. Egg is a very good source of bioavailable zinc. The iron in egg is present in the form of a substance which is difficult to absorb. Therefore, egg is a poor source of iron. Vitamin C is absent in the egg. Egg is a rich source of all other vitamins specifically vitamin A 
and B-complex vitamins like riboflavin, folic acid and also vitamin B12. Egg also contains other water-soluble and fat-soluble vitamins. How do you assess the quality of an egg? There are different ways in which the quality of egg can be assessed. Good quality eggs should be unbroken. The shell should not be broken. Although the size does not matter, the weight of an egg is important and the weight of eggs ranges between 40 to 70 grams. As egg deteriorates, the size of the air cell increases because of loss of moisture from the egg. The percentage of thin white increases. The egg yolk also takes up water from the white and sometimes the white line membrane stretches and poor quality eggs tend to, the egg yolk tends to break when it is removed from the shell. As egg deteriorates, the chalazia disintegrate and can no longer hold the yolk in the center of the egg. For good quality eggs, the shell should be unbroken. The thickness of the shell varies depending upon the feed of the animal, the inheritance, breed, etc. This slide shows a picture of the fresh egg versus the stale egg. Fresh eggs, when broken onto a plate, stand up in rounded form because of the viscous nature of the thick white which surrounds the yolk. The quality of an egg can be determined by candling, that is the, quantity of, the quality of an unbroken egg. During candling, the egg is held against a source of strong light. So candling will reveal a crack in the shell, the size of the air cell, the firmness of the albumin or thick white and the position and mobility of the yolk. As egg deteriorates, the chalazi can no longer hold the yolk in the center of the egg and the yolk tends to move towards the shell. This can be observed during candling. However, candling is not very reliable. When a fresh egg is broken onto a plate, it stands up in rounded form because of the viscous nature of the thick white which surrounds the yolk. However, a stale egg, when broken onto a plate, tends to spread all over the plate. A flotation test is also useful to determine the quality of the egg because good quality eggs sink in water. Poor quality eggs tend to float because of increase in the size of the air cell and also because of loss of moisture from the egg. There are other tests as well to determine the quality of the egg. This is the horse unit which is a measurement of the thick white in relation to the weight of the egg. Good quality eggs have got 72 haw units whereas poor quality eggs may have only between 30 to 60. The width of the thick white can be measured with a micrometer. This is in relation to the weight of the egg. So the thickness of the egg white expressed in relation to the weight of the egg will give the horse unit. The white index is also important. What is a white index? The white index is the height of the thickest portion of the white. It also determines the diameter of the egg. So the height of the thickest portion of the white in relation to the diameter of the egg is known as a white index. The yolk index can also be determined, which is the height of the yolk in relation to width of the yolk. So the greater the white index or the greater the yolk index, the better is the quality of the egg. Eggs are graded in India as large that is 53 to 59 grams, medium 45 to 52 grams and small 38 to 42 grams. The grading is done based on the depth of the air cell, the centering of the yolk and free from defects as A or B. So if the yolk is in the center, if the egg is free from defects and the air cell is not very deep, then it is given A grade. But if the yolk is not in the center, if there are other defects and if the air cell is very deep, then it is given as B grade. Because as eggs deteriorate, the size of the air cell increases because of loss of moisture. Now coming to the storage of eggs. Normally for home storage, eggs can be stored in a refrigerator in closed containers. However, 
Commercially, there are different ways in which eggs can be stored. The first is freezing. So before eggs can be frozen, the egg is first broken. So the steps involved in freezing are egg breaking, separation, pasteurization and then freezing. So when the egg is pasteurized, that is heated at 60 degrees centigrade and 62 degrees centigrade for three and a half minutes, all the salmonella organisms are destroyed. So it can be safely stored for a very long period of time. The functional properties of raw egg whites are not altered during freezing. What is meant by functional properties? Egg has very important functional properties like for example, ability to form foams. It's possible to make a foamy omelette with an egg because egg can be beaten to form a foam. So these kind of functional properties are not altered during freezing. However, frozen egg yolks become viscous and gummy on thawing unless mixed with sugar, salt or syrup before freezing. Eggs can also be stored in cold storage commercially. So commercially there are large cold storage rooms where eggs can be stored. So eggs are stored at minus 15 degrees centigrade to 0 degrees centigrade. However, in this cold storage room, there should be controlled humidity and 85 to 90 percent air circulation. It should also be free from objectionable odors. In this cold storage, eggs can be stored with good quality for as long as six months. Before placing in cold storage, the eggs are dipped in light mineral oil. The film of oil left on the surface of the egg helps to prevent loss of moisture and carbon dioxide. Therefore, it can be stored for a long period of time. At home, eggs can be stored in the home refrigerator for a few weeks. However, the eggs should be stored in closed containers to prevent loss of moisture. So the eggs can be placed in a small plastic box and then stored in the refrigerator. Eggs can also be preserved by drying. Eggs can be dried whole or separately as yolks and whites. Dried eggs have got long shelf lives. However, they should be stored in cold conditions. Otherwise, it might lead to rancidity. Dried egg white and dried egg yolk have got good shelf lives. For reconstitution, the dried egg powder can be sprinkled on the top of lukewarm water, stirred and then beaten until smooth. How does one select eggs? First of all, the eggs should be unbroken. The shell should not be broken. The broken ones should be discarded. Eggs should then be refrigerated at 4 to 7 degrees centigrade. Usually when purchasing eggs, only the amount required for one to two weeks should be purchased because they cannot be stored for more than two weeks in a home refrigerator. Do not choose cracked or dirty eggs because if the eggs are dirty, it means that microbial contamination may be there. The cost of eggs, it's usually rupees 5 per egg retail and 330 rupees for 100 eggs wholesale. Egg is a very cheap source of protein. It's very good quality protein at a very low price. In fact, in all midday meal schemes, the government of India is distributing eggs for the children. This is because it is a low cost source of protein. At the same time, it's a complete protein because the biological quality of egg is the highest among the proteins. Therefore, the children are receiving good quality protein at a low cost. Finally, coming to the role of egg in cookery. Egg is very versatile because it can be used in a variety of dishes. For table use, eggs can be boiled, they can be scrambled, they can be poached or made into omelettes. Throughout the world, the breakfast of bread and eggs is very popular. That's because egg is very nutritious. It's a good source of protein as well as vitamins and minerals, particularly vitamins A and D. It's also very easy to prepare. It can be prepared in a very short time. Egg is also used as a thickening agent. For example, while preparing uh, custards like stirred custard, baked custard and a variety of puddings. So egg yolk and egg white are usually separated while preparing a pudding and the egg white is beaten until a foam is obtained. The egg yolk is then mixed with milk. It is cooked with milk and sugar to obtain a custard consistency. The egg white and egg yolk custard mixture are then mixed along with gelatin 
and set into a pudding. This is possible because egg is a thickening agent, especially the egg yolk. So it lends itself to a variety of desserts like puddings, souffles, meringues, etc. Egg is also used as a binding agent. It is used to bind the substance used as filling, for example, in cutlets, etc. So in cutlets, usually the filling, for example, a potato mixture or meat mixture, it's formed into a cutlet, then it is dipped in beaten egg and then rolled in breadcrumbs and then fried. So this helps to retain the shape of the cutlet. Hence, egg is a very good binding agent and it is widely used in cookery as a binding agent. Egg is also an interfering agent, especially egg white. So in ice creams, egg is used as an interfering agent. The beaten egg white forms foams and traps tiny air bubbles. These tiny air bubbles prevent the ice crystals from coming together and forming masses of ice crystals. Therefore, it interferes with the crystallization and therefore gives a smooth texture in ice cream. Egg is also used as an emulsifying agent, for example mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is a spread that is widely used for sandwiches, burgers, etc. It consists of egg yolk which is beaten along with oil. So the egg yolk forms a tiny film and traps air and this gives a very smooth and creamy texture to the mayonnaise. Egg is also used as a leavening agent. What is a leavening agent? Egg is a leavening agent because when egg white is beaten, it foams and tiny air bubbles are trapped in the egg white film. This when it is subjected to baking, it expands, trapping the air, giving the product a very airy texture and a very soft texture. Hence, egg is used as a leavening agent and it's possible to prepare bread, cakes, cookies, etc because egg is used as a leavening agent. Egg is also used as a garnishing agent. That is, boiled eggs are sliced into half and used for decoration, for example in biryani and a variety of other preparations. Egg is also used as a flavoring agent. It gives flavor to custards, puddings, etc. It has a very unique flavor. So when egg yolk is beaten along with milk and vanilla essence, it gives a unique flavor to the product. Egg is also used as an enriching agent because egg is a very good source of protein. Wherever it is used, it enhances the nutritive quality of the product. For example, in Bombay toast, here the bread is dipped in a mixture of egg and milk containing sugar and then it is fried, is enriched with protein. So therefore, egg is used as an enriching agent. Egg also helps to improve the texture of candies like marshmallows. So in marshmallows, the egg white is beaten and it is used along with cream, butter, etc. to give a unique texture to the product. Egg is also used as a glazing agent. What is a glazing agent? For example, while preparing buns and uh, other such biscuits, etc. the egg is beaten and then with a brush, a thin layer of egg is beaten on the product before baking. For example, puffs, buns, etc. So this gives a, a very good golden brown color to the product after baking. So egg is therefore used as a glazing agent.